today's class, it's going to be a general strength class. It's, we're going to work a circuit style. We want to make sure that we have good floor space to work with, but otherwise you don't need equipment. But if you have any weights that you want to add in, that's great. We will want to have something like maybe a water bottle, a football, anything to have in your hands for the second exercise, which you can grab, you can be cushion or anything nearby as well. To start with though, we're going to just warm everything up. So we're going to start with a little bit of wrist circles and ankle circles, just to get some circulation going. Got a bounce on the spot. Shake out the arms. And then just do some stretches. So we're going to do dynamic stretches, pulling the leg up to the chest. You can do these seated if you prefer, or leaning against the wall. If balance is an issue, just pull in for a second, then let go. As usual, if you have any pain during any of these movements, just back off or skip it. We're going to go over the shin, under the knee, pull up. Should be feeling the stretch here. When you're pulling up, try not to let the knee fall down like that. So that's why we support it. And we pull the leg up as one piece. So everything comes up together. That avoids stress on the knee joint in particular. Spread the legs out. We want to just reach down one side and then the other side. You should be feeling this now in their groin area. Go as slowly as you like through all of these movements. It's about you feeling good and warming your own body up. And that can be a little bit different for everyone. Then we're going into a little bit of hamstring stretch, the back and thigh. One leg in front, one behind. Just reach down to wherever's comfortable or where you start feeling a stretch. If you don't feel much, you can start raising the foot up so you end up toes in the air, heel on the ground, and reach down. You can also try looking up and reaching forward. And then we'll swap sides. So start with the foot down, just see how far you feel is comfortable to go down. Sliding your hands down your legs is a good way to go as well, rather than going out far in front. And bring the toes up if you're ready. And aim for the foot rather than in front. Try a couple of reaching ahead if you like, and looking up. Okay, then what we're going to do is some rotations. So we're just rotating the upper body. And then let the whole body go. The lower body is rotating with it. Now we're going to stretch across with our arms. Two seconds or so each. And then overhead. is going to be bringing our chin down to our chest, just rolling it very slowly to one shoulder, then back down to the other shoulder. Try not to let your head just hang, so you're actively bringing that chin down and actively pulling the chin from one side to the other. And then slowly come out of it, and we're going to get going into our first exercise. So, what I like is to be totally barefoot, so I'm going to pop my socks off. You can be in whatever shoes suits you, socks or barefoot. Make sure that your environment is just safe for that, there's no slip or trip hazards. We should do that every time as well. So, the first exercise is called the split stance deadlift. So, you can use a weight and you can pick the weight up off the floor uh, if you have one. But, we don't need it in order to make this an effective exercise. This is really good for just good movement patterns and for engaging the muscles well. We can do that with or without a weight. So, what we're going to do is set up with one foot ahead and the other foot is behind it, where the toes are pretty much just 
in line or just behind the heel of that foot. So my right foot is just behind. I'm going to lean my weight forward into this front leg. And I don't mind if this heel comes up. But if you don't feel comfortable lifting it up for balance reasons, you can keep it down. But we still want to feel like there's a lot more weight in this leg. You'll know you're doing it right if you feel like this leg is a little bit like tensing up and it just feels heavier because it's taking more weight from above and this feels lighter. So then from there, what I want to do is bend the knee, so have the shin going forward and keep the heel on the ground but you'll feel more weight going to the middle of the foot and that's good. As you go down, we're going to just reach our hips back behind us and then we're going to push up using the idea that we're pushing the ground away rather than lifting our body up. So as we come down, I could lift up here with my back and let that lead the movement, but then I don't get the right hip pattern that I want for. I want the legs to do the work and my back to do very, very little. So now instead, when I come down here, I think I need to push my body up, push it away from the ground. My hips should feel like they come forward and I finish with my weight over the front foot rather than pushing myself back. This is not the way we want to finish. So we want to feel like we're finishing over this foot. Now the reach can be just to just past the knees, like mid shin, because ideally if we can get that hip hinge nice and correct, if you like, but just basically expanding the back of the hip a lot, then our back won't really round too much. So we're going to use that to help stretch out the glute. The hamstring should feel a stretch, and then we'll push back up using those muscles. We're going to go for eight on each side. So going down, one, two, go at your pace, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to swap sides. Knee forward, reach down. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight. Okay, next exercise is the one where we want to have something to press out. I'm just going to grab my foam roller. It's a good example as well if you have one. We're going to be squatting and pressing this out at the bottom. Something you can also do is grab your shoes. If you have a wedge, you can use that, but I'm guessing most people won't have a wedge lying around. And um, so, Grab any spare pair of shoes if you're already in shoes. Or if you already have a high heel on your shoes, you're probably fine, to be honest. But this just helps people get, pardon me, it helps people get into a lower squat without having to lose their shape of their spine and feeling still balanced at the bottom. So if you have your heels lifted up on thin books, shoes, etc., then you're going to be able to get a little bit lower. Then we're going to press out when we're in the bottom position and then stand back up. So I'm just going to take these away from myself, but that's something you can do to really help your depth in your squat if that's something you struggle with. If you can't go past a certain point, it doesn't matter, don't worry about getting as deep as anyone else that you see, you're just going to go as far as you can. If there's any pain in the knees, just try and think about sitting down with your hips without having to push your knees forward. So that'll load the hips more and less at the knees. Uh, really good though to not let your your toes come off the floor like that, the ball of foot come off the floor. So some people will be so far back they'll be zero weight in the front half of their feet. We want to see that you're actually keeping the feet down on the floor the whole time. It's really nice as well. If you do want to go down, you can lift your toes up and then at the bottom squeeze through that big toe on both sides just before you lift up. Start squeezing it into the floor all the way from the ball of the big toe up to the pad and then push yourself up, still squeezing the big toe into the floor. And the reason I say you can lift the toes up, but it's okay because we're not lifting the ball of the foot up and we're not actually losing weight. 
by doing this. So we're going to go down, squeeze, and come back up. That's just something for you if you struggle to engage your glutes. It's really useful to use in a lot of these exercises. We're not going to get everyone to do that every time. We get a little bit um, confusing potentially, but you go for it uh, as extra in this class or another time. So, going for eight, down, press out, and up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good work. All the rest of the exercises in the circuit are going to be on the ground. So again, going to get comfortable into your onto your mat or similar. And we're going to start with a bear crawl isometric. So we're going to hold this for up to 20 seconds. You can break it up as needed or go for the full 20. So we're basically putting hands on the shoulders, knees under hips, and we're going to lift up the knees and just hold ourselves there as best we can for 20 seconds. And then, excellent. So next one on our backs, we're going to do a single leg glute bridge or double leg if the single leg is a bit too much for you. We're just doing six on each side. So we have one leg in the air, one leg down, squeeze that big toe into the floor, drive up, come down. Big toe into the floor, drive up, come down. And remember, you're trying to lift your hips up, not your back or your hamstring. Don't worry about those areas. Just try and lift that belt line up to the ceiling and drop it back down. Four, five, six. Swap sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then our dead bug. So we're going to be still on our backs. Hands in the air, back flat into the floor. Then we're going to lower down one leg and then the opposite leg. So we're going for six each side. Don't let the back come off the floor. Three more each leg. Four. Oh, we've got one more each side. and we're finished the first round. So we're going to go through everything once more, and then you can choose to do a third set on your own if you like. We're going to start at this, it's on set lift. I'm just going to grab a little bit of water. This is a good time for you to do so too. So it's this on set lift. With leg in front, just show from in front today, this, or this round. So other foot is just behind the heel. So bend the knee forward, push the hips back, keep the knee forward as you're pushing the hips back. And it feels like they're pushing up and back as you go down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So up sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Squats to press it. I want to shake the legs out a little bit. You can turn the feet out if you like, or keep them forward. Whatever is comfortable for you. But sometimes people end up with one foot out and one foot forward. And I recommend you just try and keep them symmetrical. So if one's turning out of this, turn the other one out as well. So. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. 
seven, and eight. Onto the ground for bear crawl isometric. So try not to sink towards the floor. Stay high, push up. 20. to try and squeeze that toe on the way up will really help get your, get your glutes. You can also come off the heel a little bit. So into the ball of the foot and then push up. But you don't need to lift the heel as you do. Okay, so six reps. One, two, three, four, five, Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dead bug, if you're ready, you can go straight into it. If you feel like the last set was easy, you can straighten your leg out rather than keeping it bent. So this is the short lever with a bent knee and a long lever straightens out. So I'm going to go for the straight one now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two more, eleven, well, good. Just a quick tip while I'm here. When you bring one leg down, this leg often wants to help by pulling in, but that just shortens the abs and makes it a little bit easier for them. We want to keep that knee from moving in as best you can. When you're aware of it moving in, just try and bring it back over the hip. Okay, so those are exercises for today. Just a general strength class, full body. Really nice uh, things to work on within it though. So if you feel like there's any targets you want with, with regards Working on glute activation, for example, or working on ab strength, that also will really help with your pelvic floor. If that's something that you're concerned with, these exercises are really good for that sort of thing.